Robert H. Jackson comes to Albany and the Albany Law School. Let's begin with the city. He comes to this capital city from the other side of the state with Frank Mott, because in addition to being a lawyer, Frank Mott was a Democratic politico. He was the Chautauqua County Democratic leader, as Jackson put it, if you can call someone a leader who had so few followers. <laughs> but at some point, apparently in the first months of 1911, so six to eight months before Jackson enrolls in this law school, he comes with Mott to the Capitol. He's Mott's apprentice, he's Mott's underling. Jackson's own political sentiments ran the Democratic way also. And a lot of introductions and handshakes are part of that visit. And one of them is a handshake with that freshman state senator from Dutchess County, Frank Roosevelt. Frank Roosevelt at that time was 28 or 29 years old. Bob Jackson was 18 or 19 years old. Frank Roosevelt had run and won almost accidentally a legislative race in Republican territory. And what he had going for him was personal money, great good looks, a genial personality, and a heck of a surname. But from there, of course, develops this incredibly important relationship and friendship over the next 30 plus years. They knew each other when they were Frank and Robert. They, of course, later became Franklin and then Mr. President and FDR and Bob. But they knew each other before any of that was foreseeable to either of them. And it gave them a depth in their bond uh, that I think was a, a very important part of everything that developed later. Why Albany Law School? Well, Jackson, the great and beautiful writer, actually left a beautiful paragraph on this very topic. After a year in Mott's office, I decided I ought to go to a law school, not having had any college. I considered various law schools in New York State. I decided against New York City because I didn't like the city to live in. The, the man with the fishing pole. I considered Buffalo, which by the way was Frank Mott's alma mater, and Syracuse, but I decided on the Albany Law School for two reasons. Some of the leading lawyers of the community, he means Jamestown, had been Albany Law School men, and it was the seat of government. The Court of Appeals sat there. The Appellate Division sat there. The Supreme Court, the legislature, and the whole state government. I thought I would learn more that was not in the books at Albany than at any other place and that it would be useful to me in the practice of law in my community. I borrowed the money to go to Albany Law School from John Howitt, my mother's brother, who was a rather eccentric bachelor and a firm friend. And thus he came here. He apparently received some credit for his apprentice year in Frank Mott's office, and thus entered what was a two-year program here at Albany Law School as an upperclassman. He got in just under the wire, in 1911, the New York State Board of Regents had increased its requirements for a Bachelor of Laws degree to three years. And the Court of Appeals was in the process of revising its rules to require four years of legal study in order for those without a college education to gain admission to the bar. So Jackson deciding to go to law school isn't just spontaneous, it's well informed. He started his classes at Albany Law School, which then was located across from the Capitol, on a site that is today under the Alfred E. Smith office building, in a building that had been originally the Old Redeemer Church. And it looked like a church. It had a, a peak and a, an ecclesiastical front. As Jackson put it, the building exhibited greater piety than many of its occupants. <laughs> Jackson finished his degree requirements in that one year. Um, with apologies to Phil Neal, I must say that the lore of Jackson doing double duty seems to be incorrect. It's not quite clear what a normal co course load was, but it's clear that Jackson wasn't doing twice the normal co course load. He was taking what appears to be a fairly standard course load, and at the end of two semesters, the dean and faculty passed him on his examinations and viewed him as degree eligible. So however they did this transferring in from apprentice, that's how two years of legal training and one year of law school become enough to graduate. But more of that in a moment. Jackson did well. He did very well in law school. Uh, and it's not just his word for it that we can take. He actually saved his transcript. And I can report that at least in his first semester, his very impressive grades include a 96 in procedure, a 90 in real property, a 93 in bills and notes, 
a 98 in guarantee and surety ship, and, well, every transcript needs a bump, an 88 in equity. An overall average of 93, 100% attendance. That's the fall semester. He didn't save the report card from the spring semester. He did report, jot down someplace, that he got a 100, a perfect grade in his corporation's class. And I'll, of course, take his word for that. In addition to his coursework, though, those reasons that brought him to Albany filled his days. And again, he put this down for us. These are Jackson's word. I watched the calendar of the New York Court of Appeals, and as I had no classes in the afternoon, my classes were all in the morning, I went to the Court of Appeals every afternoon when there was a particularly good argument. I heard the very best of the New York State Bar in their appearances before the Court of Appeals. It was a great court, and that opportunity was really one of the most important assets of the school. I did enjoy appellate work, and later came to do a great deal of it. Quite an understatement, as Judge Graffi has demonstrated. But there was not so much appellate work from our city of Jamestown. The trial work was the thing that was important. I had hopes of someday doing appellate work, of course, and was interested in how good lawyers did it, their technique, their style of arguing cases, but I didn't expect a very large appellate practice. And now the understatement. I did not foresee that I would one day be Solicitor General of the United States. In spring 1912, commencement came to approach. But word got out in May of a distressing situation. You see, Jackson's class uh, wasn't all Albany men. There were actually three women in that class in 1912. And they were all fine students, Daisy Snook, Clara Pritchard, and Clarissa Pritchard. But somebody took note in that springtime period that Clara and Clarissa were only 20 years old. And thus, although they were in the process of satisfying their course requirements and on track to pass their exams, they weren't age eligible for the New York State Bar Examination, which required you to be 21 at the time. And the dean of this school, Jane Newton Fierro, stood on a principle in enforcement of that bar position and said, we will not confer degrees on people who are not age eligible to take the New York Bar Exam. This became a matter of great press attention, I think, because they were twins and girls and photogenic and so forth. Um, and it even makes the New York Times. But guess who else is only 20? That never makes the papers. But when commencement rolls around that June, the Pritchard sisters and Robert H. Jackson do not get degrees from the Albany Law School. What they get is a diploma of graduation which is a satisfaction of requirements certification, but not the law degree. You'll remember the Clara and Clarissa Pritchard issue from the 1912 commencement, which of course was the Robert Jackson issue too. Well now this young man, who had not been qualified in the view of Dean Fierro to receive a degree from this school in 1912, was the Attorney General of the United States, and imminently perhaps the Chief Justice of the United States. And I'd love to see a transcript or a film or hear a tape. I don't think any of those exist. Uh, but Albany Law School makes it right. What they do is they confer, belatedly, his 1912 degree on Attorney General Jackson in that moment of 1941. Write it this way. Albany Law School, 1912, LLB, June 5, 1941, as of class of 1912. <laughs> he then explained. The peculiar entry about Albany Law School, for your information and not for print, this is to the Cornell Law Quarterly, is that I graduated in 1912 while under 21 years of age, for which reason I was not entitled to a degree. As time cured that, the degree was awarded later on a sort of nunk pro tunk basis. That's the practical wisdom of Robert Jackson. Now listen to a sentence that he spoke in his opening at Nuremberg a little more than four years later. That four great nations, flushed with victory and stung with injury, stay the hand of vengeance and voluntarily submit their captive enemies to the judgment of the law is one of the most significant tributes that power has ever paid to reason. This man loved the law, and this is the place where he got it. Thank you very much.